Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is that one you've been waiting for. How to do powder load development on the 284 Winchester with Vitivori N165 powder. Now, as with all powders, you gotta have a party starter and our party starter for today is the Federal 210M primer. If I'm holding the box right side up, which I'm not, too bad, you can read it upside down. And of course, on top of that charge is going to be, if I can turn the box the right way, there we go, the burger. 180 grain, seven millimeter match VLD bullet. The reason for this bullet is I'm not quite as familiar with it as I am with the hybrid, and it makes it a little more of a challenge. But as you'll see, it's not that much of a challenge. Let's go back to the powder for a moment. This pound of powder was given to me by a good friend, Devin. Thank you so much, my friend. Devin makes stocks out in Idaho, and he also finishes stocks. If you want to see his work, go look at F-Class John's channel because John has several of Devon's stocks. They're beautiful works of art. And if you're looking for a stock maker and stock finisher, Devon is your guy, especially if you're anywhere near Idaho. As you know from my previous videos, I've already shot this test, or at least most of it. I haven't done a proof shot at 600 yards yet for good reason. Not every shooter out there has access to a 600 yard range to do load development on. And I don't want to tell you that you have to have one to do this because you really don't. I can do load development at 100 yards and have for many years. It's just not that difficult to get it right at 100 yards. You will need a chronograph and a 100 yard range and an ability to measure the groups for both location and size, which means you're shooting a piece of paper. It's really not hard. So we're going to use a method that I call the Cortina method. It's one that's been championed by Eric Cortina, a good friend of mine, for many years. And it works. It works well and it's very simple to do. It's not absolutely perfect for long range because you need to do a tune at long range after you've done this. But this will get you so close that it usually just shoots right out of the box. At least in my experience. So for today's test, we have a couple of goals. The first goal is to make sure that our Velocity is over 2,750 feet per second out of this 284. Now this is a 30 inch barrel and it's got over 1,300 rounds through it at the time of firing this particular test. So it's going to make a little less velocity than a brand new just broken in barrel does. That doesn't mean that it won't do it and it doesn't mean that my powder charges will work in your barrel. So please be careful, do your load workup safely. That's all the disclaimer I'll put in here. There'll be one in the description as well. So we're going to be really careful doing this. We're doing a load workup. Now I did work up 254.5 in that previous video, as you saw, and it made 2,700 feet per second. So going from there, I need to get a little higher and I don't know how much higher I need to get to find the node. So I loaded three shots each of 54.5 and then up three tenths each one until I got to 57.5. Then I went 57.8 to see if I could even get the bullet seated on it, and I could not. You max out on case capacity before you max out on powder charge, at least according to the Vitivori data. But we're going to go test it and make sure that it's safe. So when we do a 100-yard load development on powder charge, there's a couple of things that you can get mixed up in that cause problems. So let's just address those right now. The first thing is whether to do powder charge first or seating depth first. And this is where it is a little murky. For me, I do powder charge first because I understand what the seating depth needs to be approximately on the bullet before I start. In other words, I'm usually within six thousandths of where it needs to be as a final when I start doing powder development. So it looks really easy from my perspective because I'm not having to hunt for the seating depth after I'm done. If you have to hunt for the seating depth, it's going to make the groups look really ugly while you're doing powder load development, and it's going to be difficult to ascertain what is the best powder charge. If you know absolutely nothing about the bullet you're shooting, or the cartridge that you're shooting, or both, I would suggest that you do a quick seating depth test at a safe charge, just to find the general range where it will be. You can fine tune it after you get the powder charge right, but if you're off by 50 thousandths when you're doing powder charge, your results are going to be muddied a bit. So off to the range I went with the bullets jammed 10 thousandths into the lands because I know this bullet will be approximately there and my powder charges. Unfortunately, I forgot the SD card in my lab radar the day I shot this. 
So I had to set up the camera pointed at the lab radar so I could record the velocity so that I could give the data to you. Be forewarned that I preset the caliper to zero at 283 thousandths because that's the size of the holes when I check them. I don't set the caliper to a full bullet diameter. That's just the way I do it. You don't have to do it the way I do it. Do it whichever way you want to because everything is relative. You could just set the caliper to zero with it closed and measure the outside to outside of the group. And other than bragging rights, who cares what the group size actually is in thousandths of an inch? I started at 54.5 because that's where I left off and I'd only fired one shot at 54.5 previously and it came out exactly at 2700 feet per second. Well, I fired four today and those four had an average of 2691 with an ES of nine. And the group was ugly, to say the least. It's very tall, they're all touching, but this is not good for an F open rifle. We need to go further up. So off I trundled to 54.8 and fired another group. This group is a little smaller, it's only three shots this time, but it was 2700. 2701 and 2701 with an ES of 1. That is a pretty good ES for a test shot. But the group was just okay and honestly, it didn't look like it was anything to write home about just yet. In addition, it's too slow for what I need, so we're going to exclude this one and we're actually going to skip a load and go to 55.4. At 55.4, it got really ugly and it's all spread out the three shots aren't even touching each other this is what i've been looking for and you're asking yourself why would he be looking for this because this my friends is what we call the scatter node the scatter node typically is about one and a half to two percent of powder charge from the good node so we know that we don't want to go down that one and a half to 2%. We want to go up. So we can skip charges if we've done a pressure check. So I pressure checked a couple rounds on my way up to make sure I wasn't going to blow myself up and fired a group at 56.3. And that's this one. Now this is looking a lot better. And the velocity spreads were 5 feet per second. It was also above our minimum velocity. So now we're in business. We've gotten somewhere. We have a decent group and we have a velocity that is adequate for our needs. But we can't stop here. We got to keep going because we need to know how wide the node is. So up three tenths we go to 55.6 and we shoot this group. Now this is starting to look even better. 56.3 was okay. It was pretty good, but it wasn't anything to write home about. But 56.6 is what we're looking for. This one's in the ones. It's only three shots. We're not saying that this is going to shoot 10 shot ones, but it's very good. And the ES with a velocity of 2771 was still five. So I have two consecutive groups with an ES of five each. The point of impact is consistently stable and the groups are small, which tells me that we might have found something really important but it's not time to quit yet. Let's keep going. 56.9. Now 56.9, we get a perfect harmonic vertical line. Now this vertical line is a matter of a little bit of velocity spread and a little bit of harmonics on the rifle. I could see the rifle, I could feel the rifle talking to me and telling me that it wasn't happy harmonically. But I can't tell you just just listen to the rifle because you don't know what you're listening for yet in a lot of cases. But with enough experience, you start to sense when the rifle is in or out in how it behaves and how it sounds when you fire the shot. It's too murky and too nebulous to try to teach over YouTube. I can show you in person, but I really can't teach you over YouTube. So let's go up another charge. Now we're going to go to 57.2. And this is where it gets scary interesting. Look at this group, but then look at the ES. Holy cow, three shots and it's that big? It's starting to scatter out the velocities quite a bit. And we still haven't hit the top yet, so let's go another charge, 57.5. Now at 57.5, I could barely get the bullet seated all the way down and get it to stay put. 
Anything above that, it tended not to seat all the way in. I was crunching powder and literally could not get the bullet to seat to the correct depth. So 57.5 had a big velocity spread and a relatively small group, although it's not anywhere near as good as 57.2 was. But, I mean, what are we looking for? We're looking for consistent point of impact and small groups. So let's look at this as a whole. From 56.3 to 57.2, we had small groups. And we had one shift in point of impact that occurred at 56.9, where we went from the low part to the upper part, but then it was stable. And if you look at the center lines of all of those groups as a whole, the center lines of the groups are so close together that we likely have found something important here. So at this point, I would take all of this data and I would look at it and say, you know what? I am going to shoot 56.5. I'm going to come just down from the 56.6 so I don't bump into that 56.9 vertical, but I'm not going to go all the way down to 56.3 because it has a little horizontal there. I want to have a little bit of room to grow in the event the temperature warms up and the powder starts to make more velocity. And that's all there is to figuring out your powder charge for a 284 F open rifle with Vitivori N165, or actually with any powder, because the technique is the same regardless of which powder you use. Now, the next step from here is to take this load to 600 yards and see if it shoots because I have access to a 600 yard range. If you don't have access to a 600 yard range, I would suggest you take it to the longest range you have available to you and shoot five shot groups, consecutive five shot groups to see if it holds together. Sometimes they come unglued after a few shots because we're taking such small samples. These are not statistically significant. We are still in a fact finding mode at this point. So I'm going to take it out to 600 yards and I'm going to shoot some groups at 600 and see what it looks like. And today I finally got a chance to shoot this load at 600 yards. It was a cloudy, rainy day and became blustery after I had been there for just a short period of time, so I didn't get a chance to shoot multiple groups in ideal conditions. The first group was shot in virtually ideal conditions, and as you can see, it shot relatively well. The downside is the ES did not hold. While the standard deviation is relatively low, the extreme spread for 10 shots was 15 feet a second. I'm only showing you five of those shots right now because the other five were shot into a bit of a whirlwind and did spread them out vertically quite a bit. Here, I'll show you. With that in mind, I think I have a node for this rifle. But at the same time, with the ES increasing, it makes the upper part of the node more attractive than what it was before. Because as you can see, the small sample is what bit us on that low ES, resulting in us chasing the wrong load. I suspect if I go up to 57.1 or so, I will find an equal ES and perhaps a little tighter groups. But there's no need to do that. Either way, this load shoots plenty good enough to shoot nothing but X's at 600 yards. And if it'll do that, it'll probably shoot pretty well at long range as well. A 15 foot a second ES is worth about four inches of vertical at a thousand yards. And that's well inside of the X ring. So from my perspective, the Vitivori 165 works quite well at these low temperatures that I'm shooting at. What I don't have is data on shooting it at higher temperatures. I did shoot it in a very warm barrel at the end, and it seemed to handle that quite well without going crazy. But I haven't done that at 90 or 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside air temperature to see if there's actually a difference there. As a summary, we have to have a plan before we go do load development for powder charge. And that development plan has to include safety because we don't want to blow ourselves up. It also has to include 
minimum goals for velocities, which are not the maximum capability of the cartridge. As you saw from the data, the velocity at the top end was much higher than where it ended up wanting to tune. That's pretty normal in my experience. We have to have an idea where the bullet needs to be before we start. That means doing a seating depth rough test before we start building up that charge. Now you can do all of this in one range session if you have the ability to seat bullets at the range. And I recommend that you either use a Wilson die with an arbor press or a little hand press to get that job done. Either way works just fine and I've used them both in the field. Last, you have to have a goal for what accuracy level is your minimum acceptable for what you're doing. For me with an F open rifle, that's a quarter minute of angle consistently for large numbered groups. Not three shots, but we're talking 10 shots. A quarter minute and 10 shots at 100 yards, well, that's something to think about. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Until next time, stay safe, do your load development, and I'll see you in the next video.